question 1.1 um says a uh, constant net force acts on an object moving in a straight line uh, which one of the following quantities associated with the object will remain constant uh, during the motion so we know that uh, we have a constant force is given in the equation so what's the consequence of a constant force uh, the consequence of a constant force is a uh, constant acceleration. So the answer for point for 1.1 will there be a uh, number C. So uh, 1.2 says uh, the weight of an object on the surface of the earth is W. Uh, these are the interesting questions. Uh, you have to work with variables. What will be the weight of the object on the surface of another planet? of the same mass as that of the earth uh, but twice the radius of the earth so we know that um, weight uh, equals to mg right uh, the mass of the object remains the same uh, so the, it's the gravity that is changing uh, gravity uh, is given by uh, capital G which is a constant uh, the mass of the planet uh, divided by uh, the radius of the planet squared, right? Uh, on the question, it is said that uh, the mass is that of the Earth. So this is, uh, let's say, let's name this G Earth. So now let's find G for the new planet, right? So that we can know how the weight will change. Uh, this is equals to, uh, this is a constant. They say that the mass is the same, uh, but then the radius is twice that of the Earth. So here we're going to get um, 2R uh, squared, right? Uh, which gives us uh, G uh, multiplied by mass divided by 4R squared, right? Uh, so now instead of having, um, having uh, G equals to GM uh, divided by R squared, uh, we have G uh, being equals to uh, 1 over 4. Uh, multiply by g m divided by r squared so because weight equals to mg if you reduce g by a factor of four then the weight also goes down by the way factor of four here on 1.2 uh, the option that gives us that is uh, number a so for 1.2 uh, the correct option is letter a uh, 1.3 uh, says uh, the diagram below shows a cricket player moving his hands down from position A uh, to 2 to 3 while catching uh, while catching a ball. Okay. Um, which one of the following statements correctly explains why the cricket player moves his hands downwards? Oh, okay. So a, a cricket player is catching a ball. And then as the ball is landing, uh, it's moving the hand down, right? Um, okay, makes sense. Uh, before I read the options, uh, like, it, we know that uh, F net uh, equals to delta P uh, divided by delta T, right? So if you increase the time of contract, you decrease F net, right? So there won't be so much impact if it's a collision or there won't be so much force uh, generally. So if you're catching a ball, it makes sense that you'd wanna, uh, as, soon as, as soon as it's landing, you're moving your hand back so that you increase the time of contract and the ball doesn't bounce off and then the force is larger, right? Because if you decrease the time, then the force will go up. So let's go through the options. Um, the impulse on the ball is decreased. Uh, that's A. B, it says the change in momentum of the ball is increased. Um, C says the change in momentum of the ball is decreased. And then D says the time it takes to change the momentum uh, of the ball is increased. Uh, which is true because we are increasing uh, the time of contract. So the time it is taking to change the momentum of the ball is increased. So for 1.3, uh, the correct option uh, is D. Um, 1.4 uh, says, consider the motion of a small stone thrown vertically upwards until it reaches its maximum height. Uh, so we have a stone. Uh, 
there it is it is thrown up uh, until it reaches its uh, maximum match some v which is close to zero there and then ignore the effects of friction okay so uh we free falling uh which one of the following combinations of graphs correctly shows how the momentum p and the gravitational potential energy u of the stone change with time okay so the formula for p we have um m multiplied by v and then uh, that's momentum and then potential energy we have uh, mass uh, gravity and height so p you can see it's linear so the graph of p must be linear um as velocity increases uh, the magnitude of p increases because the mass is the same so p is uh, basically a variable is basically a function of her velocity so here we're looking for a linear graph for p uh, that is uh, going down because the velocity is uh, going down um a is exponential is exponentially going down so that's wrong and then b is exponentially go is linearly going down so b is a candidate and then c um <laughs> that's not linear and then d uh, is also uh, linearly uh, going down so d is an option and then for you um look at the equation of you the equation of u is a uh, linear so because the equation of uh, u is linear uh, potential energy you might be tempted to say that uh, the correct option is b because um, when you increase the height the potential energy goes up but then the only difference is that in this instance the potential energy is not a function of um, it's not a function of height uh, it's a function of time right uh, so here for p we didn't put uh, the fact that it's a function of time into consideration because velocity itself is a function of time right uh, we have vf uh, equals to vi plus a delta t but then for you uh, that has consequences because okay let's say uh, you're studying a zero right meters and then two meters and then four meters and then six meters right um okay and then let's say you hear at the top and then you're dropping a ball down at uh, the time it takes for the ball to go from here to here is not the same as the time it takes from the ball to go from here to here because for every second the the velocity of the ball is increasing by 9.8 so let's say here it took like um let's say it took uh one second uh yeah it's probably gonna take like uh, 0 0.5 seconds uh just less than uh, so to say in a way so um you can see that uh potential energy uh, decreases uh exponentially uh with time uh with height it decreases linearly but then with time it decreases exponentially uh, but then in this case uh, it is increasing right because uh, the ball has been thrown up so the right option is option um it's option d yeah because uh on option d uh we are uh, the potential energy is increasing because the ball is going up so the answer here is d uh, this is a very tricky question because um initially you'd think that it's b because u equals to m multiplied by gravity multiplied by height height is not squared so it should just be linear but then it's you know sort of a bit more complicated than that yeah um let's move ahead uh 1.5 uh, 1.5 says a boy and a girl having different masses are uh, initially addressed at point P. They slide down at uh, different paths of a water slide is shown in the diagram below. Ignore the effects of air friction. And then the options one says, okay, let's uh, let, let, let's read the, the, the options. Uh, the first option says uh, the only... Uh, the only thing that's true about uh, about uh, the boy and the girl it's a uh, roman figure one a uh, roman figure one says only conservative forces act on both 
uh, the boy and the girl where they are sliding downwards. Okay, the question said let's ignore um let's ignore free effects of friction. So uh, that is correct, right? Uh, so I is correct. Uh <laughs> Roman figure one. Okay, so in A uh, we have Roman figure one. So Roman figure one, so A is still a still a possible answer. And then B it's also a possible answer. Um C is not a possible answer because it doesn't have a uh, Roman figure one and Roman figure one we say that is correct. And then uh, D has a Roman figure one, so it's also still a possible answer. Then uh, for Roman figure two says uh, the boy and the girl each have the same gravitational potential energy at point P. Uh, but if you come and read the question, it says a boy and a girl having different masses and uh, above we were saying that uh, u uh, potential energy m gravity height so if the masses are different then uh, they have the same height they are on the same uh, body so their gravity is the same the gravity that uh, is being applied onto them is the same so uh, Roman figure number two is not correct because they have different masses. So all the options that have Roman figure number two are going to fall off. D has Roman figure number two, so it's not correct. Um, so now the only left option is A and a B. Uh, B uh, then Roman figure number three says on reaching point Q, the speed of the girl is equal to that of the boy. The speed of the girl is equal to that of the boy. Okay, that is that is correct. So the option, the correct option here is is B. Let me tell you why the speed of uh, the boy is equal to that uh, of the girl. Um, is <laughs> the answer is because of Roman figure number one. Roman figure number one says only conservative forces. So if a force is conservative, then the work done by that force is independent of path. That means that the work uh, net, uh, which is equal to change in kinetic energy, is going to be the same, right? Um, these two people are coming from, from rest. So that means that, uh, okay, let's say, so we have 1 over 2 mvf squared uh, minus 0 because initially they're from rest, right? So they have the same velocity because they have the same work. The forces acting on them are conservative forces the work done by conservative forces is independent of path thank you um let's move ahead 1.6 1.6 an astronomer observes uh, that the light spectrum on a star has been blue shifted um if we have a blue shift we know that uh, the frequency uh, increased uh, the wavelength uh, went down and the distance uh, between the two also went down, right? So let's say uh, Why is the this? Let's just say R. R is the distance. So this is what we know about a blue shift and then uh, It goes on to say how have the observed frequency of light from the star and the distance between the star and the Earth changed the frequency we already said that is increased so from a uh, B, C, D. Uh, D is not a candidate anymore. C is not a candidate anymore. So the only question, uh, we're only choosing between A and B now. And then, uh, the other, the other information is the distance between the star and the Earth. Uh, A, C is increased and then B, C is decreased. Uh, we know that, uh, for a blue shift to occur, the distance need to have, uh, reduced, right? And then, so the answer for uh, 1.6 is option B. Uh, let's move ahead. Uh, 1.7. 1.7 says a small negative point charge Q is situated halfway between two identical spheres, P and Q, identical. So they have the same charge, they have the same mass, um, they have the same everything, basically. And then... Uh, sphere P exists an electrostatic force of magnitude F. So F of P, uh, let's call this a uh, key. On sphere, on sphere Q, uh, P exists an electrostatic force of magnitude F on sphere Q. What is the magnitude of the net force experienced by point charge 
uh, the point charge is is halfway is halfway right so if p uh, is exerting some force uh, k then q will be exerting uh, some force okay if this is uh, if if this point charge is positive then p will be pushing it that way and then q because it's identical will be pushing it and uh, that way will be repelling right so this will be minus q and then if uh, the point charge is negative then the same is still true uh, p will be pulling it and then q uh, will also be pulling it so the effect of p is neutralized by the effect of q so the net uh, so the, the magnitude of the net electrostatic, electrostatic force explained uh, experienced by the point charge is thus zero so for 1.7 and uh, the option is uh, number a and then um, 1.8 1 1.8 says uh, consider the statements below regarding ac power and dc power uh roman figure one okay so let's do it the way we did that uh, so we have option a uh, b c d uh, roman figure one says ac uh ac voltage uh, can be changed during ac power uh, transmission yeah that is that is true uh the voltage can be changed that is why uh it's safer to use ac over dc and then ac is the one that is commonly used now so everything that does even that doesn't have roman figure one falls apart a has a roman figure one still a candidate b is gone um uh, c is still still in the game and then uh d is gone so um uh so so we can basically uh ignore a roman figure two uh because the only possible um the only possible answers is a or c and then they all don't have figure a roman figure two so um let's look at roman figure three ac power transmission is more energy um efficient yeah that is true so uh the option here is uh c so c uh is the answer and then a uh, falls apart is also wrong yeah ac voltage uh can be changed uh ac is more efficient even just because of that because the voltage can be changed it makes it more efficient so for 1.10 uh we have a question saying uh some of the energy levels of an atom are represented in the diagram below. Uh, then we have uh, the, the ground level, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. And then the question says, uh, which of the following energy transitions uh, below represents the absorption of light of the lowest frequency uh, by the atom? So um, if, if, okay, let's say you have, e1 and then you have e2 and then you have uh, e3 and then uh, you have e4 uh, if uh, there is a big uh, a bigger uh, gap uh, between these energy levels uh, then the energy uh, is small so if the energy is small uh, the frequency is more right so if you're looking for the lowest frequency then you're looking for the uh, smallest energy uh, which uh, of, of these options uh, from from a ground state to f to the fourth energy level uh, that's a big jump that's the greatest from the first to the third that's a bit smaller from the third uh, to the fourth uh, that looks like the smallest so the option here uh, 1.10 is uh, is d